Welcome to the Amplifier Podcast, the show where the best in business discuss how you can grow your business best. I'm Wyatt McPherson, I produce this show, and this episode, Don Cooper is joined by someone who really cares deeply for the employee experience and making their time extremely memorable, Dylan Schoonover. Dylan will be with us for three episodes discussing what making memorable and meaningful experiences for your teams really means, how truly important it is, and how you can best get started with it. This is a key aspect to having a healthy and cohesive team, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next two episodes with Dylan. And as always, I truly do hope that you enjoy this episode of the Amplifier Podcast. Now, please take it away, Don. All right, folks, welcome to the Amplifier Podcast. Today, I have Dylan Sconover with me, and Dylan is with Strategic Wealth Designers in beautiful Denver, Colorado, And we're not going to be talking about designing wealth. We're going to be talking about culture and Dylan's experiences with creating incredible experiences for his teams and for, and for his clients. And I think this is a really important part of company culture that uh, I'm really excited uh, to talk to Dylan today. So buddy, how are you? Welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm so excited. We're going to have some experiences right here today. Absolutely. I'm, I'm excited to talk about it. You know, we, we we had a quick chat a few days ago, just getting ready for the show. And I, I wish I had just recorded that because uh, I thought I thought it was a, a cool conversation. And, you know, before we dive into cool employee experiences, why don't we just uh, tell our audience a little bit about who you are? I think You've got a really interesting background that has nothing to do with uh, planning uh, planning wealth. So tell everyone a little bit about who you are. Sure. So I am Dylan Schoonover. As you said, I work for uh, Strategic Wealth Designers, but that's not uh, really who I am. I'm more of an experience-based person, and everything I've kind of done up until this point in my career has been focused on that and an experience for the employee. And that's the big key difference is that we want our clients to be have a great experience, but we so, we want our employees to have one too. So I, uh, I was raised in Kansas. I went to the University of Kansas, uh, spent uh, four years at school there, came out, started my own TV show for a TV station, uh, the CBS affiliate uh, in the United States, and traveled around on tour buses and lived with famous musicians like Kiss or Eric Church or Ellie Golding, uh, who won America or no, Britain's Got Talent and did a lot of interesting things with some famous people. And I have a lot of stories that we could go down a path with on some good, some bad. And in fact, getting into Canada uh, is very difficult to do on a tour bus. So if you've ever, ever had a DUI or any back uh, backstories, like they're not letting you in. So it wasn't uncommon for the a band to cross over the the border and then uh, not have a drummer. And they have to find a drummer somewhere in Canada to perform, whether it was Montreal or Toronto. So that was kind of interesting, but everything always centered on experience for me. And so I, uh, I was fortunate to be recruited when the TV show ended, uh, be able to go and work for a sports management company and focus on experience there. And I got to live on a golf course for a few years, which was nice. And then, uh, and then I expanded into the financial services realm. And uh, while I work for a financial services company, I like to think of it more of as a marketing experience based company that does financial services. That's neat. You know, you, you, as you described that, I've had some really crazy experiences bringing in help, bringing in consultants, bringing in people into Canada from the United States, simply because of the nuances between what's a misdemeanor versus what's a crime. And DUIs was uh, was certainly one of the things that caught people off guard. Well, yeah, I paid my fine and um, I'm good. But, you know, in Canada, that happens to be a, a criminal offense, I think, in the in the U.S., that's like a felony, but you know it's not the same uh, kind of categorization in the U.S. I've had lots of people turn away at the border over 20 years because they didn't know, uh, they didn't understand that, it, that that there are differences. And I've, I've equally had people come across the border that thought, "Hey, we're all one big happy family," and it doesn't, you know, I didn't realize that I was really crossing international lines. I had people driving from Texas all the way to Montana to realize that uh, they couldn't cross the Montana Canadian border with, uh, with a truckload of firearms. Um, so, so I've had, I've, I've had to deal with a lot of crazy, uh, not, not musicians with uh, drummers, but, you know, mechanical technicians who had criminal records and, uh, yeah. and, 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 
and weapons and all kinds of crazy stuff. So, but you know, your, your, your sports, your story about going into sports management and, you know, after getting to know you a little bit, uh, you're, I'm like, I'm talking to like a real life Jerry Maguire. <laughs> I guess. Show me the money, right? Show me the money and some <laughs> quan, right? <laughs> you know, and I think, you know, I think the, 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 the employee experience thing is, you know, give me the quan, give me, give me that, you know, that, that massive value beyond do my job and, and uh, go to work every day. And, you know, uh, what you, what we talked about and what we share now, like, it really resonates with me and it has for a long, long time, because I believe that life, one, I don't believe in work-life balance. There's just life and we work and we play and we have families and it's all an experience. And uh, I think that life is about creating memories because at the end of the day, all we are going to have is the, is, is the cool things we remember, right? Yeah. So it's one of those things where I, I like to ask people, especially business owners, like, what does it look like to be your employee? And you get all kinds of answers. And it's very interesting to see what they will say. But typically, the experience that you provide them as an employee isn't necessarily the first thing that comes out. It might be like, well, we hire people that are great with this kind of client. Or we, we hire people who have this type of personality or have this skill set. And you need those things. And you need a, a certain amount of them in certain spaces. But as the business owner, what kind of experience are you giving to that employee? And that's where we're going to talk about some examples today of, of things that just might really challenge people to say, wow, I've never considered doing something wall like that. Well, let's dive in. Like, tell me, tell me some cool stories. I, I want to just sort of just talk about some of the crazy fun stuff you've done. Because I, I, one of our mutual colleagues, uh, Dean Jackson, um, and Joe Polish talks about this as well. They talk about crazy, happy, fun days. And I think that somewhere in this is crazy, happy, fun days for employees. Um, yeah. So dive in. Sure. Tell, tell me some, tell me some, tell me some right. of the, uh, so, the, so the we'll things give you've you done. Some. So one of them, like I mentioned to you the other day was I showed up, we have offices across the country. I showed up at our Eastern side of the country and I'd set a goal with the team. And I said, if you hit this goal, I'm going to take you to do something awesome. In fact, I made a pretty big boast. I said, this is going to be the best day of your year. If not the best day, it'll at least be the most memorable day of your year. And so what I did was we showed up, I brought a film crew. Of course, they didn't know a film crew was coming. So they started asking them questions like, what are you doing today? Are you excited? And they're like, like nervous energy. They're like, I don't know. Like, I think it's going to be fun, but I don't know what's happening. And so we get together and everybody carpools for about an hour and a half. And the next thing you know, Don, we're at a tarmac and everybody's staring at a plane that they're getting ready to walk right into, go up in the sky and fall 15,000 feet down to the ground. So we're going skydiving on a whim. And I don't know about you, but it is pretty fun to watch employees' faces when they see they're getting ready to go flying out of a plane. That's hilarious. I, I, I want to see the video. I want to, you know, the skydiving, I've done that before, but I think it would be really cool just to see the changes in expressions and the emotions that people went through. Because, you know, when you told me about this, you said some people were into it and some people were really scared and a lot of things flipped around. Can you share about how that went down? <laughs> yeah. So like uh, one of the males, one of our media directors, uh, you know, he saw it and he was like visibly stoked. He was so excited. Like, this is going to be awesome. And he gets strapped up and he's got the gear and he's walking into the plane and they're videoing him the whole way saying, you know, what are you thinking? And he's like, this is going to be the greatest day ever. And then he jumps and we've got the video and his head's bobbing around. He almost passes out and which led to a lot of, uh, you know, water cooler ribbing, if you will, in the days ahead after that. But it was fun. It was fun to see the different emotions. And, you know, you, you sometimes are overconfident in yourself and then you have to kind of have a reality check and say, OK, maybe I'm not as brave as I thought. And the converse, um, we have a woman who she was our marketing coordinator in one of our cities and she was on camera. And they said, you know, do you have any last words? And she tells her husband on the camera, you know, you have my permission to kill Dylan if I don't make it back. <laughs> so <laughs> she was literally scared for her life and crying actual tears on the plane. But this has a happy ending. When she jumped, she loved it. And the video of her face, she is elated. She, you could tell she's just 
She's so proud of herself for overcoming what she saw as this huge obstacle in her mind. And so for me, that's what it was about. It was, it was about showing people that, hey, you can do something completely off the wall, something you never would have sought out on your own, and you're far more capable than you think you are. And so it was really, really cool to see the different emotions. That's awesome. You know, um, talking about like praying and if I don't make it, my famous last words. Uh, when I did all my parachuting, it was with the Canadian Airborne Regiment. And when I was going to do that whole program, it was like going to boot camp that ended with you jumping out of a plane nine times at the end of the program. And my grandmother was alive at the time. And, and she was so worried and scared for me. I'm like, I'm 17 years old. And I'm just psyched. Uh, but she was so worried for me that she gave me this, um, this little uh, Christian holy medal. And she wanted me to have it on me at all times. I don't remember which patron saint it was, but you know, it was some, something that meant a lot to my, to my nan. And, and so I had my military dog tags and I had a little piece of uh, green military duct tape that I had this, this, um, this uh, patron saint little medal on my dog tags. And I remember when we were getting on the very first plane, military C-130, and our, our drill instructors were coming by and doing a last equi equipment check, and they were checking our dog tags because that's how they would identify us if, we, if our parachutes didn't open. Um, and he flips it around, and he sees this uh, holy medal, and, and he, was a, he was a French guy, and, and he starts to laugh, and he says, well, did you say your prayers, Cooper? <laughs> and, uh, and I got a good ribbing for, uh, you know, because they thought I was scared. I was wearing it for my grandmother, but, um, <laughs> you know, but because, you know, I... But, you know, you go on, you enter that plane and you're psyched. But then as you step onto the plane, you go through a whole different set of emotions and you really don't know which way that's going to go. Excitement and fear, and it's all combined into one. And I suppose it's like your amygdala is just firing in 10 different directions between fight and flight at the same time, right? Right. How, uh, how, how did your uh your team react after the experience like what 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 did that result in yeah exactly so that's where the galvanization comes in and so uh you know i like to go next level with it like some people might say well you know we can go and we can have like a pizza party or we can go and watch a game together at somebody's house and that's like fine but i like to get past that and really challenge people's senses whether it's you know the physical exertion component or it's a mental component uh I, or even you know like you were talking about the spiritual component with your grandma i like to just push them to a level that they don't know they're always capable of because i really believe in the fact that sometimes our mind limits what our body can do and sometimes our body limits what our mind can do it just depends but if you just allow yourself to be open to things it can really have a massive impact and so with the with the post after that you just saw a completely transformed situation with the team because people had something to galvanize them, to bond them. People love doing things outside of just the office, you know? We can try to make the offices great, you know, lots of glass and windows and standing desks and, you know, good smells in the office and maybe bringing in donuts and all those things are fine, but they're never going to replicate what you can do outside the walls of the office together. But I can tell you this, when you do things like that, and that's just one story, I've got more, but that's just one. But when you do things like that, you are bringing together a team that is so much more robust and so much better together that your ROI is going to skyrocket because of it. And it's really not that expensive to do. Yeah, you know, I think people miss the, the change in context when you take a team of people and you put them into something that's not work. Um, and, and they get to know each other and interact with each other on a totally different level, you know, hierarchies melt away, any of the pretense melts away and you actually get to know people at a deeper level. And I've, I've had so many cool experiences on, on my team over the years doing that kind of stuff. I've never done skydiving yet, yet, yes. but you know, we've gone paintballing and, you know, and I, I, I set the whole thing up. Like, come and shoot the boss, right? Which, which is me. And, and they all think they're going to come and, um, and kick my butt. And then I show up with like full regalia paintball with like semi, semi automatics, automatics, because I have a lot of paintball equipment and all of a sudden it becomes, Oh, Oh, oh no. And then, and then they get to know me at a different level. 
and I think, and, and then they still kick my ass because they all gang up on me, <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's fun. Right. And you, you get, you get to spend different, you know, different, um, different extremes with people that you, maybe they've never done it before and you certainly haven't done it with them. And I think it creates bonds that are unpredictable, but almost always positive. Right. And you created a good point there, Don. A lot of times, whether you're dealing with a C-suite employee or someone who is, you know, the actual owner of the company, there's a there's a unintended divide that can happen because they feel a sort of uh, respect for that person. And so if you can let that guard down when you're in those presences and doing things like you're talking about, if, you know, come shoot me with the paintballs or, you know, come see me in an environment where I'm not, you know, the point person and telling you what to do in the whole scenario, that can really be a galvanizing effect too, because that makes them feel so much more comfortable around you when they're back in the office. So I think it's awesome. Yeah. You know, my, my wife is way better at this than I am intuitively. And way back in the early days of starting our first company, you know, we were a very small group. And so, you know, our company parties were often just at our house. Hey, come, we're going to have uh, a barbecue and come and, you know, there'd be first it was five and six and then 10 and then 15 people. And, and in those days, my wife would do something really interesting that I never thought of, but I instantly got when she suggested it. And she had a couple of rules. One was when you come into the house, she would talk to each person, say, listen, you know, Don might be the boss at, at the office, but he's just, he's just husband and dad and guy here. So just be, you know, no, no shop talk. But what she would make me do, which I always laughed at was to really drop that pretense of, oh, he, you know, of the position or how some people might perceive me, uh, particularly if you're new to the company, was she would make me wear these Kermit the Frog slippers. And so people would just see me being a little bit more silly and not in a, not in a shirt and tie, not in a jacket, you know, and in a totally different way. And I think that created bonds. Like some of those employees on my team who are still with me, we have a different personal connection because we, we did those things er, in the early days. And, and so they don't perceive me, you know, in some bureaucratic hierarchy kind of role, because that's not what our business is about. We're an entrepreneurial company. And, and I, I think that was a really fun and important thing to do. And it was a really cool lesson for me to learn early on that people got to see that you're human. And there you have it. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening to this episode of the Amplifier podcast. If you'd like to get in touch or learn more about Don Cooper or our guest Dylan Schoonover, then you can find both their links in the description of this episode. Make sure you leave a like and a five-star rating. It truly does help us out a lot. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Thanks so much for listening again, and we'll see you next time on the Amplifier Podcast.